Hi, my name is Rochelle. I live in Aurora, Illinois, and I am going to be doing this art analysis project on a couple uh, maps, architecture work, and some paintings by a very important artist um, that originated from here, from Aurora. So, Aurora had one of its first maps um, in 1880. My first impression of the map was how small Aurora actually was back then, since it's such a big city now that it has a north, west, and an east. The, map, the maps back then, obviously, they didn't have any color, as you can tell in the picture. Um, in the Holland's map, you can see just the Fox River, couple of streets, um, however the main roads aren't very bold or underlined, or at least you can't tell the difference between a main road as opposed to like a regular um, neighborhood road. However, if you look at our map, um, you can see our map nowadays, you can see that our expressways are yellow, you can see the main roads, um, those are the bigger roads, and then if you zoom in, then you're able to see the smaller roads, which are probably where houses are, the smaller businesses are, as because now bigger businesses want the bigger streets. Um, the Holland's map shows street names, ward boundaries, um, the location of some very big buildings, um, this map is now property of the Historical Society, which is a small cute store in downtown Aurora. Um, the size of the map is eight and a half inches by 11 inches. So the map isn't really long. So this firehouse is now a museum. The firehouse was built in 1887. It was the third firehouse in Aurora. The firehouse, ha the firehouse has a lot of warm colors. It has a lot of complementary harmony colors. You can see the red and the green, or aqua, I would say. I'm in the middle of that. Um, you can also see the analogous harmony colors. You can tell that the gate is a different tone of red. Um, and then you can see that the brick that they use is definitely a different tone of red as well. So it just kind of makes the gates pop out a little bit more, makes the letters pop out. Um, and then of course it makes that aqua color pop out a little bit. So like I said, I am going to be uh, talking about a very famous painter. Her name was Ruth Vansicle Ford. She originated from Aurora, was born in Aurora. She lived in Aurora for some time. She traveled to a lot of different places. Uh, she was born on August 8, 1897, and she passed away on April 18, 1989. Um, she was an American painter. Uh, she was also an art teacher and uh, the owner of the Chicago, Chicago Academy of Fine Arts. Um, fun fact, she was a classmate of Walt Disney. Um, she was first chosen for her first exhibit in 1921. She was chosen to um, do an exhibit at the American Show in the Art Institute of Chicago. She became the first woman uh, member from Illinois of the American Watercolor Society in 1954. So she was the first woman to be accepted into the society. She was also the first woman member of the Palette and Chiselle, uh, Chiselle Academy of Fine Art in, in 1960. Uh, so Ruth, worked a lot. She was a bit of a feminist, kind of. Um, she did a lot of watercolor painting. I think that's really the only thing that she did. Uh, she painted a lot of landscapes of Aurora, so that's what I'm going to be showing you. In this painting by Ruth, you can see what you call a demolition, and it is the demolition of a building because they wanted to create more parking space. Um, this was a watercolor painting done by Ruth. 
1968. In the painting, you can see all the beautiful colors that she used, the bright blue, um, the contrast in the picture, and you can see the people looking over at what's going on in the demolition, which I'm definitely not sure that they would allow that nowadays, but you can see how she tried to just make that scene strong by the fact that the glass are shattered, there's smoke coming out of there, everybody's staring at it, um, you can tell that the workers are just looking up, um, the machine that's going to throw the building down is there. You can see how she makes sure that people can see it. She makes sure that it's up nice and high. In this other painting, you can also see another view from the Leland Hotel of Aurora. Uh, you can see that she is looking out um, east over the Paramount. You can see that on the left center. Um, you can tell by the, of course, very noticeable uh, roof to the Paramount Theater. Um, these two paintings are very important only because, obviously, one, they're made by Ruth, and she was one of the most important um, watercolor artists here in Illinois, um, and in Aurora, of course. Uh, they're very famous, and I decided to just implement them in this project simply because of the fact that they're both from Aurora. Uh, of course, the views have changed, but not that drastic. You can see that in this painting, she definitely tries to make you focus more on the downtown area, which is why she adds that shade over in the top middle of the painting. Um, she tries to add the contrast by buildings, um, and then she definitely uses the colors that the Paramount definitely has now. Alright, so for my um, last but definitely not least drawing um, or painting, I decided to do this one. Um, it is another painting by Ruth Van Sickle Ford. The image doesn't have a title in the book, however, it does have a bit of a description. It's the image is detailed from painting of Burlington Railroad tracks and limestone roundhouse, looking southwest toward former Leland Hotel in the background. As you can tell, that rectangle in about the center top part of the painting is the historical Leland Ho Hotel or what used to be the Leland Hotel. Um, the image also shows the train on the railroads and behind um, the train on the railroad tracks is a building which is called a limestone roundhouse or now it's the two brothers roundhouse. Um, on the railroads she uses a lot of transparent colors as you can see as well as a bit of op opaque colors just to accentuate the properties of the complementary colors that she uses on the railroad tracks. Um, the roundhouse, the roof of the roundhouse, that uh, the train you can definitely tell. Um, this painting is of an event. It is, um, it is actually there. I'm, you know, I don't. It doesn't actually say in the book if it had a meaning to her or why it triggered her to draw this. However, it is of an event. This is historical and it is a part of. Aurora, and it has been for the very, very longest. Uh, this is obviously one of her realistic paintings. Um, she used a lot of watercolor painting. That is her medium. Um, the Burlington Railroads have been a huge part of Aurora. They have been in existence since Aurora was first established as a city. Um, the image, in my opinion, is meant to be focused on the roundhouse. Um, just because of the color usage that you see a lot of transparency on the railroads, not so much um, on the building itself. You can see that there are non-transparent colors. Um, she uses a lot of curved lines to show the dimension of the curves on the tracks. And if you look over to the left hand of the painting, you can see that she uses a lot of invisible lines to drift away into the distance. And in that distance is actually downtown Aurora, so you can definitely tell that, of course, you I don't know if she 
meant it towards that, but in that direction is downtown Aurora. And Leland Hotel is actually located right in downtown Aurora. Um, she uses a lot of shading colors as well as complementary colors. She tries to shade the sky to accentuate the tracks, but in a way, the painting itself just balances out, you know, the transparency of the railroad tracks, um, the non-transparency of the train, and the non-transparency of the um, roundhouse. It all just balances out. It doesn't really allow you to focus on one thing of the painting. It just makes you want to look at everything and make sure that you pay attention to detail. Um, I believe the painting does stay on the surface just because of the color usage that she does, um, the staining of the colors and stuff like that. I think that the painting and really all of her paintings hold a lot of pro are all watercolor paintings um, properties. She um, has a lot of staining colors. She has non-fugitive color usage. Um, you can tell uh, that some colors are transparent, others are non-transparent. Uh, you can see that she puts, uh, I mean, a lot of thought into the color usage, obviously, as any artist would. And I want to say that there is a lot of sedimentary colors. You can see that there's a bit of a lunar, earthy color, they would call it, in watercolor painting um, that you would call a sedimentary color. It, it It's a part of a transparent, semi-transparent, also opaque kind of color. Um, it's just all in one, and the way that the brush just brushes it up on the landscape itself, and that's actually how it settles in. This painting allows me to realize how much history can be told in one painting for the simple fact that I've lived in Aurora and have never really paid attention uh, to these paintings when I go to the library or just in general. I never really cared to learn too much about the history here. In Aurora, and I mean, of course I know that it's been established for a really long time. It's one of the biggest cities, I think second biggest city here in Illinois. Um, and now with this project, I definitely am able to just really realize that there's so much more history than I could have ever even thought. This painting just shows so much meaning uh, that a lot, of, a, a lot of us Aurorans don't realize that it has, it allows us just to appreciate a little bit more or just wonder how long and what else has gone on in this city. So this painting is definitely one of my favorites that she has done aside from other ones, but as far as one of her Aurora paintings goes, this is definitely my favorite. You can tell that she uses um, a lot of the analogous type of colors. She also usually uses a couple complementary colors. She uses that darker tone um, of the shading with the uh, sky um, and then the browns down at the bottom, you know. Uh, she definitely also uses um, the railroad tracks as foreground. Uh, that's definitely the more, the closest part to us. Um, in my opinion, that's definitely her foreground. Harmony of the painting is definitely with um, the cool tones of the sky uh, the shade that she uses uh, to create the gloominess there and harmony to what's going on with the railroad tracks to the roundhouse. Um, in my opinion, uh, I think that the, the color and the contrast between the building allow the tracks and the train to stand out. I think that the painting and really all of her paintings uh, have a lot of watercolor properties. She was very, very well known for that, as I said. Um, her watercolor paintings have a lot of staining colors. She has non-fugitive color usage that you can see there. This painting allows me to realize how much history is in just a couple of her paintings. You can see how meaningful 
the train tracks are to like people back in the day the roundhouse and how important it was when it f was first built I never really paid attention I never really cared for the fact that I passed by the roundhouse so often or the train tracks I pass them pretty much at least once a week uh, the paintings all of her paintings here but specifically this one just shows how much history the Aurorans can miss, you know, just the way I have. I, if I wouldn't have really done deep research into this project, I definitely could have missed it. So to wrap up this long video, I swear I didn't realize it was going to be this long. Um, these art pieces are very important just because the map is one of the first maps that was made of Aurora and when it was first established the firehouse is one of the first buildings one of the first firehouses that was done for Aurora um, the paintings I think hold the most value are the most valuable to me only because of the fact that I just learned about Ruth in this project. I had absolutely no idea that we even had any famous painters that had originated from here or that became such a big deal the way she did. Um, the three paintings at the end, uh, the railroad painting that I would summarize to be the railroad painting, uh, the painting that looks out towards the city from the Leland Hotel, uh, and then the first painting, I think they are very historic. They show Aurora back in the day, a couple years ago, a couple decades ago. So they hold a lot of history just because, I mean, in a way they're famous. The fact that Ruth was so famous just allows these paintings to be very well known. It allows Aurora to be even more known than what it already is. Um, my town, I believe, is very culturally significant. I think that a lot of people have been here for a very long time. Um, I think that it has a variety of cultures. Um, however, the diversity has become a part of Aurora. You know, I, I don't think that it was ever one type of culture. I think that through since they were first established, it has had such a diverse um, population and I think that that's amazing. I think the fact that Aurora is so big now and it has so many different people that originated from different places, that's important. Um, uh, sure, art humanities play a role in society. Um, I mean, I learned a lot from this very final project. This class was definitely challenging. Um, I think it's good to learn a little bit about cultures. I think that it just gives you that, that knowledge, you know, just the basic background that you may need. Um, I think that it, it, it can be helpful. I don't think that it is necessary in order to, you know, for every career choice or anything like that, but I think that if you just simply want to have a little bit of culture and cultural knowledge, I think that humanities may help you out in life, you know? I think that it's good to have just that little bit of a background knowledge about the humanities and all the different cultures and so much different things that you can learn from this class. Um, so thank you, because I did learn a lot. I am very appreciative about learning about the same artist that I still can't get over. I'm so a little shocked that she was such a big deal and I had absolutely no idea that she came from here. So if you want to have knowledge of cultures, take humanities. And if you don't really care, I mean, that's fine too. I don't really think that it is a vital necessity for life. So thanks for the amazing semester. I definitely did learn a lot. And I hope you enjoyed watching my video. I'm so sorry that it was so long, but I'm, I'm done.